Welcome back guys. Now let's begin your basic backdrop setup starting with threading your panels. Now the first technique that we're going to discuss is called the rod pocket. Now this is one of the most standard forms used when you're talking about draping and simply because you're putting your entire drape on the actual rod itself. This technique is actually used for perimeter draping, backdrops, canopies, and so much more. This option provides an easy way to create a base layer for more complex designs that actually require more layers. What you're going to do is thread the crossbar through your four inch rod pocket on one end of the fa fabric and you're going to sleeve your entire drape onto your crossbar. Now one thing to keep in mind, you always want to remember to ensure that your tag is facing the back and if you're doing on a pole cover, you want to make sure it's tucked on the inside of your pole covers so it's not visible. Now once you have reached the desired amount of drapes, you want to connect the crossbar to the uprights and that is going to complete your rod pocket technique. So now I'm going to demonstrate the rod pocket technique. Now when you are beginning to thread your drape, you want to make sure that your panels are in front of you, possibly on the floor, maybe in a tote. The whole point is you want to make sure that they're easily accessible so you don't have to stop or get help or anything like that. So you want to take the crossbar and you're going to nestle it down in, your, in the nape of your neck, just like this. That way you can really control the crossbar and keep it in the nape of your neck tight so it don't slide, right? So I'm just gonna pick up my drape, wrestle this on my shoulder. So once you have your drape in your hand, all you're gonna do is make sure that your seam is facing the back. I know this may not seem like a big deal, but trust me, it's a very big deal. Some panels actually have tags, and if you're not making sure the seam is in the back, you more than likely gonna have a tag showing in the front. And that is a big newbie mistake that a lot of uh, new designers make. So as you're threading your drape along your crossbar, you just want to kind of shimmy it on. And since this is sheer, it moves on really, really fast, right? So you just want to continuously pick up your drape and begin to thread. You want to look for that seam, make sure it's facing the back and just continuously go. Now for this backdrop, we are actually going for the 400% fullness that I discussed with you guys earlier, and I'll show you exactly why. So the length of this backdrop is six feet, and if you remember, how I use my easy measurement is one panel per foot, meaning I'm going to put six pieces of fabric or panels onto this backdrop. Now, once you get a good amount of fabric on, you can just kind of slide it across. So you can have room for your additional drape. And you're just going to continue adding your drape. Now this is like I picked up my fabric and voila, there's my tag. Now if I did not, if I wasn't mindful making sure that my seam was in the back, guess what? My tag would have been smack dead in front of my design. So you might not remember every time in the beginning, but it's going to take you one time to create a design and you're going to finish and you're going to notice your tag and you will always remember after that. Shimmy it to the back. Now I am on my fifth panel. And my last panel. Then you want to reattach your crossbar and voila. That is the whole gist of rod pocket technique. 
Okay, so once you have all of your drape up on your backdrop, now you wanna evenly disperse your drapes so that it's not a lot of overlapping, you don't wanna have gaps and things like that. So a good rule of thumb, another good pro tip that I'm sharing with you guys is, you know you have one, one panel per foot, so you wanna make sure that you have each panel directly or exactly one foot wide. So meaning, this is gonna be one panel here, and I'm gonna roughly estimate, that's another panel there. You always wanna find your middle. And most crossbars, if you're dealing with six feet or something like that, they will have a button directly in the middle. So this is gonna be a quick indicator exactly where three feet is. So that's when you're gonna just bring your third drape you want to have it on one side of your one side of your marking, and then you're going to take your other drape and bring it, close it in on the other side of your mark. That will easily tell you exactly where the middle of your drape is. And even though if this is not making sense to you now, once we get into the more intricate designs, you are going to realize how just this one simple tip is going to save you so much time when it comes to layering applying different colors, applying different techniques such as crisscross. I can't wait to show you that, so just stay tuned for that. And then just continuously disperse them across. So now once you have them uh, evened out, now if you wanna take it a step further, you can actually, actually measure for accuracy. So the easiest way to get accuracy and knowing exactly where your panels are is by using an old handy dandy measuring tape. Now, this isn't nothing special. This is something that actually came from Walmart and you could use the exact same thing. The whole purpose is to just measure out your backdrop. So what you wanna do is again, look for that hole that shows you the three foot mark. You're gonna measure out your tape and then you're gonna move your panels according to them being one foot apart. So let's just say that's one foot there, meaning this, that's where the two panels should meet, right? Then you take it to the one other foot, that's where your other two panels should meet. Right about there. And then your balance, meaning that's your exact middle. Once you have them all evenly dispersed, only thing you're gonna do now is just fill in your gaps. You wanna just kinda of move them around cause you know that they're in the right spot. Pull on them, make sure your pleating will come out nice and crisp. And then you're gonna do the same exact thing on the other side. That is where they meet. That's my three foot mark. Bring that out to two feet. This is where the other two should meet, perfect. Bring that out to one feet. This is where they should meet. Perfect. Once you do all that, just to give them a little ruffling, just to fill in any kind of holes you may see. What you don't want to see and what you definitely want to eliminate is any of this. And if, if, you, if it looks like that at this level, imagine what it would look like once you go to raise it and begin pleating and designing. You're going to be able to tell because how you start ultimately is gonna determine how you finish. So that completes the raw pocket technique. From here, I'm gonna show you guys how to attach your covers so that you make sure all of your hardware is hidden and not exposed. Okay guys, now I'm gonna share with you guys another technique called up and over. Now this technique is actually used when you're designing a double layer backdrop, but on a single crossbar. It isn't always necessary to use multiple crossbars when you're creating layers. You can create a very full backdrop using various colors and different textures on a single backdrop stand alone using this very technique I'm gonna show you. You'll be able to see this technique step-by-step step as we progress throughout this course we're going to create designs using this so you can actually see how it's done. However, in order to execute this look effectively, the fabric should be twice as long as the height of your backdrop. 
there are some pro tips that I will share with you to help you even if your panels aren't as long as I actually recommend. These amazing tips will not only help you maximize using the equipment you already have, but also eliminate you wasting time trying to find a solution or better yet, how about posting the Facebook groups only to get so many conflict and remedies. The gist of this technique is to simply locate the middle of your drape. You're going to hang it over the crossbar and instead of having one panel, it's going to provide you with two panels. This is going to give you a fuller look. So let's see that in demonstration. Okay guys, now I'm going to share with you guys another technique called up and over. Now this technique is actually used when you're designing a double layer backdrop, but on a single crossbar. It isn't always necessary to use multiple crossbars when you're creating layers. You can create a very full backdrop using various colors and different textures on a single backdrop stand alone using this very technique I'm going to show you. You'll be able to see this technique step by step as we progress throughout this course. We're going to create designs using this so you can actually see how it's done. However, in order to execute this look effectively, the fabric should be twice as long as the height of your backdrop. There are some pro tips that I will share with you to help you even if your panels aren't as long as I actually recommend. These amazing tips will not only help you maximize using the equipment you already have, but also eliminate you wasting time trying to find a solution or better yet, how about posting the Facebook groups only to get so many conflict and remedies. The gist of this technique is to simply locate the middle of your drape. You're going to hang it over the crossbar and instead of having one panel, it's going to provide you with two panels. This is going to give you a fuller look. So let's see that in demonstration. So now we're going to assemble your up and over backdrop. So one cool tip that I'm going to share with you guys again is a pole cover that I actually created from a draping panel. Now, most draping panels, when you purchase them pre-made, they will actually have two seams on either end. So it'll be a seam at the top and it'll be a seam at the bottom. I primarily only use one. So if I need something quick, like a pole cover, I will just cut it off the other end. And that's what I did with this here. So I'm going to utilize this to cover my pole because when you're doing up and over design, your pole will be exposed. So you just put that on, shimmy it on, and then you want to put your crossbar back and bring it all the way across. Now this doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be uniform because primarily you're really not going to see it. You just want to use it as extra, you know, some kind of extra security knowing that no one will see your crossbar. So after that, what you're going to do is take those very long panels that I was telling you guys about and you're going to start the technique. Now this is actually a very long panel. This is 30 feet wide. So you can normally start at minimum maybe 20 feet, 21 feet, because if you're doing a, let's just say a 10 foot backdrop, your panel needs to be at least 20 feet mainly probably 21 to give you a nice good puddle. So the first thing you want to do is locate the middle of your panel. So here's my middle. And now only thing I'm going to do is do exactly what it says, which is go up and go over, right? So you just take your other piece. And it's just as simple as that. You go up and you go over. And you're going to do the same exact thing for your other panel. Now for this design, I'm actually going to only be using two panels because I'm going to show you a different kind of backdrop that doesn't require 400% fullness. So again, I find my middle. And I just toss one side over, just like that. So now you're going to just open your drape all the way across your entire backdrop. All the way over. Now in order to have your 
straight when you're doing this technique form any kind of pleating or anything like that. So what you guys are going to do now is called pinch pleating. And again, very simple term because you're doing just that. You're going to pick your drape up and you're just going to pinch it over. So what you're doing is just trying to make small bunches to make your drape full. So the goal is to, now you notice entire panel is 10 feet wide. So you, since you only have two panels, once you're done pinch pleating, pinch pleating, <laughs> this entire drape should come to the middle of your backdrop. So you just want to continuously pinch pleat as it inches over. And just keep going till you reach the middle about. Now and again, if this uh, pole cover like twist and turn, no worries, because again, you're not going to see it. You want to fill in any kind of gaps you may see, just to make sure your panel is even. And then you're going to do the same exact thing on the other side. Open your entire drape up across the whole backdrop just to kind of get, get it open. And then you're going to pinch pleat, same thing. Continuously do it all the way to the end of your drape panel. Now you do want your two panels to meet and not just meet, you want them to overlap so you don't on the naked eye won't be able to tell where one panel end and where one begins. So once you get to the end, you're just going to take one end of your panel and you want to tuck it a little bit just so you won't see the seam. And then you just want to overlap your panel just like that. So once you actually raise your backdrop, this will just look like it's puddling. I mean, this will just look like it's pleating. So no one will be able to tell that uh, your draping panels are meeting right there. So once you've done all that, you just want to kind of shimmy things around, fill in your gaps. And at that point, once you stand back and see everything and you're happy with everything, you're going to attach your pole covers and then you're going to start designing. Now, pole covers don't really change too much. So I like the DIY pole covers like we used in the last backdrop. And we're going to use the same exact kind in this backdrop. So if you get to the point where you have a lot of fabric, one good thing I do that saves me a lot of time, these pole covers, I don't uh, disassemble them. I normally keep them, I keep a good 10, like in a tote where they're already prepared. So when I have to design an event, I don't have to constantly make pole covers. Attach it to that one, then go to the other side and do the same thing. Look out for your tag and your seam and make sure that it is on the underside. Take your access pipe cleaner and give it a little twirl around just so you don't uh, lose your pole cover. And at this point, you're ready to raise. Okay, so now you're going to raise. And since you did the up and over technique, you kind of don't want to raise too high because guess what? This is sheer. Your fabric can shimmy all the way to the other end. So you just go up a little bit and then go to the other side and kind of go back and forth just to make sure you don't lose the evenness of your fabric. Okay. So now you have your, your backdrop raised with the up and over technique. Now you can go and clean up anything you need to clean up, but you, it depends on really how you're going to design. So we're not really going to do a basic backdrop. We're going to take it a step further and create an amazing flowy romantic looking backdrop. But guess what? 
that's actually in the next module. So for this module, we've actually come to the end and I hope you really got so much value and you should be fired up and excited for the next module like I am because we're going to get into intricate designs. Okay, so once you have all of your drape on your crossbar, you have your pole covers assembled, now it's time to raise your uprights. But when you're raising your uprights, you do not want to raise one side max height and then go to, other, to the other side because it'll be off balance, it could possibly get stuck, it may even fall. So you definitely want to be safe and possibly raise one half maybe and then go to the other side and do the same thing. Now you wanna just even them out until you have your desired height. So once you're at the height that you desire, now it's time to just kind of evenly place your panels uh, get them from like on you know, they'll kind of be all bulged together. So you kind of just want to straighten them out. Okay, so now that you're raised, your next thing is to actually go to the puddling. Okay guys, now I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about pole covers and the importance of them to your entire design. Because pipe and drape upright pole covers, they are a really great way to hide your poles with a color that either matches your drapes or it complements them with a different color. One clear newbie mistake is exposed poles. Any and all of your hardware should be covered at all times. This can be easily achieved with pole covers whether they are pre-made or you can create them yourself. Pole covers are purchased from various event decor companies and they work like a giant sleeve or maybe even a sock. And they simply just slide over your existing uprights concealing the edges of a single backdrop. However, the style I highly recommend are the DIY pole covers. They give your design a complete look that's pristine. To create one yourself, you'll need either one entire drape panel, one pipe cleaner, and any kind of pole that has a hole. Now I'm gonna show you guys just exactly what I mean. So what I'm using is a pole that actually is from uh, one of my old balloon art arches, right? You could use something from a balloon arch, you could use something from an old backdrop. The whole goal is to get any kind of pole that has a hole. If you have to, you can even use a broom. <laughs> the, the point is you just wanna be able to stick this pipe cleaner right into the hole just like this and give it a twist so the goal is to have your pole and your pipe cleaner just like that so now you're going to take the other end of your pole you're going to slide it through your drape panel now this again i'm using crush here and this is an entire panel some people you know they try and cut them in half and they do all kinds of things if you're looking to achieve premium draping, I highly recommend you don't do that. Just take the entire panel and make a pole cover. So now you wanna slide the entire drape all the way down onto the pipe cleaner, right? Just like this. And then you wanna just untie that little twist you made and release your pole. Now that you have your entire drape on the pipe cleaner, you wanna just Make sure like all of it is neat, it's not no bulgy pieces or anything like that. And you're just gonna bring it all the way down, just like this, and give it a twist. Not too many twists, don't go overboard, don't put it in like a, two, a shoestring knot, nothing like that. Just give it a quick little twist, like you're twisting some bread, something like that. Now, if you can see through this hole, that means it's entirely too big. You should not be able to get 
your finger all the way through. If you can, that means you have to tighten it up a little bit more because nine times out of 10, if you get your finger through, guess what? Your pole is gonna slide through and that's something you wanna prohibit. So once you have your whole pole cover created, only thing you're gonna do, uh, be mindful, like I told you guys earlier, you wanna make sure that your seam is in the inside, meaning going down. So only thing you're gonna do is sit it right on top, just like a cap, right? And you wanna, what you're looking for is this hole, you want it to line up with the hole on the top of your upright. You don't want it on the side like that. You don't want it in the back like that. You want it to sit directly on top, just like it's a cap. And that is your pole cover. If you have it nestled on top the right way, it will not fall off when you go to lift your backdrop. But if you need, let's just say, some kind of extra security, just secure it to your crossbar. Just like that. Give it a little twist, that way it definitely won't move. Okay? Now you wanna do the same exact thing on the opposite side, and then you're ready to raise. Okay, so this actually completes the setup portion of your basic backdrop. Now that we're going to raise, I'm gonna show you how to complete it and make it a polished look. Okay, Stay guys, tuned. Now you've gotten to the part where you finally are going to complete your basic backdrop with your puddle. Premium backdrop should have a nice puddle at the bottom of your design, right? Another big newbie mistake that speaks of the inexperience is a gig line that looks like the designer either didn't care or maybe they just didn't know. It's the small intricate details such as these that will give your skills an immediate rating of its value. Things like this help people really decide if they're willing to pay higher prices for your work. If your potential clients don't see the value in your work, simply put, you're not gonna get booked or you're gonna have to continuously settle for those cheaper clients that really don't care about small things such as puddling, right? So give yourself a pat on the back for enrolling into this kind of course because it's these kind of valuable tips that will really set you apart from the competition. So I want you to be sure to puddle every backdrop you create. It will be the smartest two minutes of your entire design life. Let's see that in demonstration right now. Okay, so when you are creating your puddle, what you wanna do is start from the middle of your backdrop, right? You want to just take your entire panel you wanna pick it up, pinch it, pick it up. You wanna kick the access to the back, right? And then you're just gonna let it drop and stack. Automatically, it'll do this on its own. It's not too much more you have to do. But the key is to put the access in the back. What I don't wanna see you do is this. Okay, I'm done. No, please break that habit if that's something you do. Pick it up, pick it up, pinch. Kick it to the back, let it drop and stack. And you're gonna do this same exact thing for each panel. Pick it up, pinch, lift, drop, stack. Pinch, lift, drop, stack. Same thing here. And you're even going to do this same technique when it comes to your pole covers. You want to pinch, lift, drop, stack. Now when it comes to your pole covers, you just want to be sure that your entire base plate is covered. You shouldn't be able to see your corners. No one should even know what color your hardware is because they do come in black and they do come in silver but no one should know that. So you're just gonna continue, pick up, kick back, drop, stack. Same thing. And then finish it off with your pole cover. Now, if you have any excess kind of poking out a little bit, 
what you want to do is just simply get down there and just straighten it out. Now, if you guys have any, you know, military family, then you should know what the gig line is. So what you're looking for is a gig line that should be directly straight across your entire backdrop. If anything kind of is going out of the way or willy nilly, fix it immediately. And that completes your basic design.